हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द सेंसर एंड ट्रांसड्यूसर क्लास इन लास्ट क्लास वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द टॉपिक से स्ट्रेन गेजेस एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अबाउट द वर्किंग प्रिंसिपल कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑल दोज थिंग्स एंड इन लास्ट क्लास वी स्टार्टेड द सिग्नल कंडीशनिंग सर्किट ऑफ स्ट्रेन गेज एंड देयर वी फाउंड दैट दैट द विच स्टोन ब्रिज सर्किट इज यूज for the resistance measurement in strain gauge so in the last class we told you that the wheatstone bridge circuit is normally used for the resistance measurement of strain gauge because of two uh, important factors the first one is that in case of the strain gauge the resistance change that occurs due to application of stress is very small so we need a circuit which will be capable to detect such small change in resistance and which stone bridge as it uh, works on the principle of the null balance uh, very small changes in the resistance can be easily detected using the which stone bridge circuit and the second factor is that uh, as the strain gauges are nothing but simple resistances made up of conducting elements that is why uh, these resistors are also prone to uh, change in the temperature so basically due to change in the ambient temperature also the resistance of the strain gauge may change and if due to the change in the temperature the resistance changes that will also indicate a uh change in the measuring circuit and which will be uh, which may be considered which may be uh, misunderstood by the user as a change in the strain so that is why uh, we have to use the temperature compensation process so the wheatstone bridge also gives us a readily available compensation process for the temperature effect by use of the dummy gauge so today first we will discuss about the sensitivity of the strain gauge uh, sensitivity of the wheatstone bridge circuit and then about the temperature compensation effect so while we will discussing about the sensitivity we will found uh, we consider that the wheatstone bridge circuit uh, can be of three types or basically we can use three configuration of the wheatstone bridge for measurement of the strain gauge resistance so what are those configuration they are called quarter bridge half bridge and full bridge okay so we will one by one discuss about this different bridge configuration okay so let us Uh, do it using. We have to do some derivation. So let us point the camera towards the copy. So first, we discuss about the quarter bridge. so what is a quarter bridge in the wheatstone bridge we have four arms so having this four arms we connect our voltage supply across two arms let us consider it is a b c d and among these two points we get the output voltage 
so say this is our input voltage ei and this is our output voltage eo okay and these are the resistances r1 r2 r3 r4 so among them say first of all here in case of the quarter pitch configuration we consider that among these four arms only one arm is consisting of the strain gauge so let us consider that this arm r1 is our strain gauge okay so this is called the active gauge okay so only one arm is consisting of the active gauge and the other arms they are just simple resistances okay they are standard resistances so while in the other arms we are using the standard resistances so we can consider that all these resistances are of equal value okay so we consider that r2 equals to r3 equals to r4 equals to r okay and also we consider that the unstrained resistance of r1 is also r okay now what happens when you apply some strain so when you are uh, sorry when you are applying some stress to the uh, strain gauge that is in arm r1 then the resistance of the r1 will be changing okay so let us consider that the change in the resistance due to application of the strain is delta r so after application of stress the change in resistance r1 is delta r so now the resistance now r1 becomes r plus delta r so this is the value of the r1 now okay now at this condition our bridge is unbalanced because initially when our all the resistances value were same at that time our bridge was balanced okay now uh, due to change in the resistance r1 the bridge will become unbalanced okay so at this unbalanced condition what should be the output eo so at this condition the output or uh, the change in the output eo can be considered as del eo and it will be given by the potential at point b minus potential at point d okay so now consider that what should be the potential at point b and what should be the potential at point d so at point b it will be as this is your uh, positive side is connected to through this so in this circuit we can get the potential at point uh, b will be like this that it is the r plus delta r this thing divided by the total resistance that is the r that is the resistance of r4 plus r plus delta r into that input voltage whatever it was that is ei 
minus what should be the potential at point D it will be your R R2 value is also R divided by R plus R into EI so we can write it in this way that it is the R plus delta R divided by 2R plus delta R minus 1 by 2 into EI so that implies uh, R plus del R minus 2R minus delta R divided by 4 R plus 2 delta R into EI. So that equals to one minute. Uh, that equals to your it becomes mm, this one this one cancels and r minus 2r that is uh, your uh, r by So uh, over here we get uh, this is 2R plus 2 delta R minus uh, 2R minus delta R. So this delta this 2R and 2R cancels and this uh, 2 delta R and delta R from there we get only delta R and at the denominator we are having uh, 4R plus 2 delta R into EI. So we can write it uh, del R by R divided by 4 plus 2 del R by R into EI. So over here this del R by R it is the fractional change in the resistance uh, per unit resistance. So this quantity del R by R is very small. So this 2 del R by R is much much smaller than 4. For that reason we can write this del R by R divided by 4 into EI. Okay. So now this uh, over here del r by r is we can write it as the gauge factor we know that gauge factor is equal to del r by r divided by strain so del r by r can be substituted as uh, the gauge factor into strain divided by 4 into ei now what is the sensitivity sensitivity is nothing but the output by input and in the deflection bridge what is the output the in the deflection bridge output is the uh, delta e that is the deflection in the meter so this delta eo is your output so your sensitivity sensitivity delta eo output by input input is what input is the strain by epsilon is equals to gauge factor into ei by 
फोर ओके सो दिस बिकम्स द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द क्वार्टर ब्रिज ओके सो हियर वी कैन फाइंड दैट सेंसिटिविटी इज नथिंग बट इट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ द गेज फैक्टर इन टू द गेज फैक्टर एंड द इनपुट वोल्टेज डिवाइडेड बाई फोर ओके सो दिस इज द सेंसिटिविटी ऑफ द क्वार्टर ब्रिज सो नेक्स्ट लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट सॉरी हाफ ब्रिज सो वाई इट इज कॉल्ड हाफ ब्रिज बिकॉज इन द वेस्टर्न ब्रिज वी नो दे आर फोर आर्म्स एंड अमंग दिस फोर आर्म्स हेयर वी विल बी यूजिंग टू स्ट्रेन गेजेस इन द टू कॉन्जिक्यूटिव आर्म्स ओके सो फर्स्ट शायद द्रो द सर्किट सो वी हैव टू स्ट्रेन गेजेस एंड टू स्टैंडर्ड रेजिस्टेंसेस लाइक दिस so this is your r1 this is your r2 r3 r4 so over here we have the power supply ei and here across this two diagonal point we connect the output measuring device that is the any voltmeter so over here let us uh, give the name a b c d okay so why we use uh, two strain gauges over here and how to install these two strain gauges in practical cases so you see uh, this kind of thing uh, circuit we will be using where we know that we have two equal and opposite strain in a particular surface so suppose we have a cantilever beam and this cantilever beam we give pressure or force along this direction so when this force will be given your beam will be bended like this so in this kind of situation we normally use two strain gauges like this so these two strain gauges suppose this is our r1 and this is our r2 now these two strain gauges among them r1 is under tensile force it is elongated and r2 is under compressile force it is compressed okay so as r1 is elongated its uh, resistance will increase and as r2 is compressed its resistance will decrease okay so what we can get we can get that unstrained resistance of all the four arms are r okay so let us consider let unstrained resistance unstrained is resistance of all four arms r capital r okay so we can do what initially R1 equals to R2 equals to R3 equals to R4 equals to R and this makes the bridge balanced so 
now e o will be zero okay now after application of stress after application of stress r1 is increasing so how much should be the increase so we can consider that the increase is del r by r okay for the fractional change it will be del r by r so the resistance of gauge rg1 when strain is r into 1 plus del r by r and resistance of gauge rg2 when strain is r into 1 minus del r by r okay so now the potential at point D will be what? Potential at point D equals to so here the potential will be as both are the equal resistances so they will be R by R plus R into input voltage sorry uh, over here you can see this is this is r this is also r so potential at point d will be r by 2r divided into e so we can have r by 2r into ei that implies ei by 2 so this is your uh, potential at point d in this diagram over d over here and what should be the potential at point b potential at point b will be equals to your r into 1 plus del r by r divided by r into 1 plus del r by r plus r into 1 minus del r by r into pi okay so this by simplifying this what we get we get r into 1 plus del r by r into r a common 1 plus del r by r plus 1 minus del r by r into ei so here it comes uh, del r by r del r by r cancels so it becomes 2 r r cancels so here 1 plus del r by r divided by 2 into ei okay so now the output voltage del e o that is the deflection in the meter that will be equals to your this particular voltage minus potential across d that is e d d that equals to 1 plus del r by r divided by 2 minus 1 by 2 into sorry EI. So from here you get EI by 2 into 1 plus del R by R minus 1. So this cancels. So we get del R 
by R into E I by two. Okay, so this is your output voltage. Sorry, uh, okay, this is your output voltage now. So what should be the sensitivity? So sensitivity. Sensitivity del E O by epsilon. So that equals to so del R by R. We know that del R by R is equal to gauge factor into epsilon. So here we get gauge factor into E I by two. Okay. As del R by R equals to gauge factor into epsilon okay so from here we can see that that the sensitivity over here is gauge factor into input voltage divided by 2 whereas in case of the uh, quarter bridge we found it was the gauge factor into ei by 4 okay so here we can see by using two strain gauges in the circuit we have increased the sensitivity By a factor of two, okay. So where in the previous case it was divided by four, and here it is divided by two, the same quantity. So here we are getting better sensitivity by using two strain gauges instead of one strain gauge. Okay. So this is how the half bridge gives us better sensitivity sensitivity as compared to the full uh, sorry quarter bridge. Okay. So next we will see. the configuration of the full bridge okay so let us see full bridge okay sorry so what is the full bridge full bridge is such a bridge where instead of using two active gauges We will be using four strain gauges in the circuit. Okay, so all the arms resistance of the Houston bridge will be replaced by standard strain gauges. Okay, not uh, normal constant resistance. Okay, all the four arms will be using strain gauges. Okay, so let us see uh, the diagram. So here it is A, B, C, D like this. So here all the arms that is R G one equals to R, R G two equals to R, R G three that is also equals to R, and R G four that is also equals to R. So all the Four arms of the Houston bridge are having equal resistance strain gauges. Okay, so equal resistance means unstrained resistance of all the strain gauges are same. That is capital R. Okay, now what should be the installation of such strain gauges? How the strain gauges are installed in practical field? So similarly, we have a cantilever beam. and in this cantilever beam we will be applying force like this from the top side and here the gauges are installed in this way so two gauges in the upper side and two gauges in the lower side and what are the gauges they are this is the rg1 and rg3 so rg1 and rg3 that means these two gauges in the upper side and RG two, sorry, RG two 
and RG4 that is 2 and 4 these two gauges in the downward side okay so RG2 and RG4 will be under compressive force and RG1 and RG3 will be under tensile force so uh, initially under balance condition under balanced condition the RG1 equals to RG2 equals to RG3 equals to RG4 okay and sorry this is the input voltage and here we will get the output voltage and EO equals to 0 okay now when the stress is applied the RG1 now becomes R into 1 plus del R by R ok and also the RG3 will be same similarly RG2 now becomes R into 1 minus del R by R and RG4 now becomes same ok so here RG1 and RG3 is increasing and RG2 and RG4 are decreasing ok now the potential at point B and potential at point D we will find out so point D potential at point B will be equals to R into 1 plus delta R by R divided by R into 1 plus delta R by R plus R into 1 minus delta R by R into EI ok so to simplify it like the previous one so you will get 1 plus delta R by R divided by 2 into EI ok simply similarly find the potential at point D point D will be equals to R into so potential at point D means at this point so over here we are getting RG3 and RG4 among them RG4 is uh, reducing and uh, RG3 it is increasing ok so let us find out R into 1 minus del R by R divided by R into 1 minus del R by R plus R into 1 plus del R by R into EI. So if you simplify you will get 1 minus del R by R divided by 2 into EI. So your output voltage del EO equals to EBD that equals to 1 plus del R by R by 2 
माइनस वन माइनस डेल आर बाई आर बाई टू इन टू पी आई सो फ्रॉम दिस यू विल गेट दट डेल आर बाई आर इन टू पी आई ओके सो डेल आर बाई आर वी नो डेल आर बाई आर इज गेज फैक्टर इंटू स्ट्रेन इंटू पी आई सो वाट विल बी द सेंसिटिविटी सो योर सेंसिटिविटी इज इक्वल्स टू डेल्टा ई ओ बाई एफसाइलम दैट इक्वल्स टू गेज फैक्टर इंटू ई आई सो हियर यू फाइंड that for the full bridge your sensitivity is gauge factor into the input voltage so which is actually double of in that case of the uh, half bridge okay so this is how we find that we get the sensitivity increasing while we are using the full bridge configuration okay so in case of the full bridge whatever sensitivity we get in case of the half bridge the sensitivity is half in case of quarter bridge the sensitivity is again half okay so this is the conclusion that while we are using the four strain gauges we are getting the maximum sensitivity we are when we are using two strain gauge we are getting less and when we are using one strain gauge we are getting much more less sensitivity okay